Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're tackling a really common problem that happens whenever you're taking a photo of a group of people. Invariably, there's always gonna be someone who's gonna be blinking or sneezing or just making a weird face or ask you to like, ah, can you swap my face out from this one to this one? It's actually very easy to do with the help of artificial intelligence. In this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to swap those faces and let artificial intelligence do most of the hard work for us. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I love this image, it's so fun. But let's say the family was like, oh, can you replace this? She's just being a little bit silly and this guy is blinking a little bit, no big deal. We have another picture from the same photo shoot right here where both of them actually look really good. Now. I would encourage you if you're doing any type of family portrait or things like that, just take a lot of pictures so you have extras to do this. If you're trying to replace someone from like a totally different day, usually the lighting isn't gonna be the same, so this trick isn't going to work as well. Just wanna give you a heads up on that. Okay, first thing I wanna do, we're gonna use our marquee tool or any selection tool really just to make a selection around the subject that you actually want. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna use the move tool to click and drag from one image to another. So there we go. We have like the subject we wanna replace and the replacement. There we go. We're gonna go back to this and do the same thing. M for the marquee tool. There we go. Just make a selection right around the subject. Make sure to make it a bit bigger so you have some room to work with. We're gonna use our move tool and click and drag right over there. Let's hit F for full screen and go ahead and zoom in. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with this subject. So let's go ahead and click on our layer here and start to bring our subject down. Now, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the subject is in the right place, which can be quite difficult if the layer is at 100% opacity. So let's go right over here to where it says opacity. We're just gonna click on the word opacity and drag that down. Yeah, about 60 something, 50 something looks good. So we can kind of see through. Now we're just gonna kind of click and drag to move the subject around to try to get her in about the right place. Now, my suggestion here would be you want the collar right here of both of the people to line up. If the collar is in about the right place, it's much easier to actually make this work. So we're gonna hit Control or Command T for our transform. You can see I can move this around. There we go. And I'm gonna take this little control point here there we are, and we're just gonna bring it right down to the collar of the person. Now, if you don't see the control point, just click on this icon right up here on the very top left. You can see it hides it, and then it'll make it show again. There we go. So let's go ahead and bring this right down to the collar of the person. There we go. And then from here, you can rotate it left and right. There we go. You can make it larger and smaller by clicking on these arrows right over here, or you can, this is what I like to do actually, you can just click right here on this H, or this W for height and width and click and drag left or right to scale this up or down. And because we moved our control point to the collar, it's gonna move it uh, like from the collar. It's gonna be exactly where we want it to be. So that looks really good. And right about there, I think we're actually in a pretty good place. Let me see, maybe we need to make this a little bit smaller. I just wanna make sure her, like, there we go. The collar is in the right, about the right place, and I wanna make sure her eyes are in about the same place in two images. You know, if we make this bigger, her eyes are gonna go way up, smaller eyes are gonna go way down to make sure it's about the same size. Just try to get the eyes in about the same place. And we're gonna hit enter, and then bring our opacity back up to 100%. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a layer mask, basically to do a rough masking around the edge. We wanna hide that area where it's a perfect square at this moment. So we're back on the layer. Let's just turn this off and on to make sure we're in the right layer. That's really fun to see. Uh, we wanna click on our layer mask icon right down here. So let's go click on that icon. We have our layer and our layer mask. So now with the layer mask, we're gonna hit B for the brush tool. Okay, you can use the open and close brackets to make your brush larger or smaller, or you can just simply right click and adjust your size and your hardness. I wanna bring my hardness kind of like all the way down to zero. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then let's make our brush a little bit bigger Fantastic. So now I'm just basically using the brush tool. I'm painting with black just to do a nice blend from one image into another. That's my goal here. I just want to do a nice seamless blend. Fantastic. All right. And I want to get it like as good as I possibly can. But as you're going to see, like there are going to be some areas. There we go. You can see because we put the collar in about the same exact place, 
that should be easy. You know, like making sure that everything looks good all the way up to the collar. Boom, because it's, you know, the same collar in the same place. There we go. That's gonna be nice and easy. Just make sure we got that fitted in there. Perfect. And that looks pretty good. Now, the most difficult part of this transition is going to be what do we do where these two people's hair uh, collide, right? Because I'm, you know, painting it on my layer mask, but then her hair is going to go away or her hair is going to go away. It can be a little bit tricky to get these areas right. And of course, there are like always millions of ways to do things in Photoshop. But now with the artificial intelligence, we can just simply make a selection of this area and say, fix it, you know, like that's the problem area. So let's do it. I'm gonna hit L for the lasso tool. We're just gonna make a selection right over here. There we go, nice and simple, nice, easy selection. And with our new, now I'm into Photoshop beta, we're gonna be using generative fill. So let's go ahead and click on our generative fill that's here in our contextual taskbar. And let's just hit generate. I don't need to type anything in there. We can just hit generate and see what it gives us. And it's gonna give us a few different options which is always nice. There we go. And you can just kind of click through them and see like, hey, do any of those actually work for me? Uh, I'm gonna hit generate one more time because I thought those results were okay at best. <laughs> but that's the whole deal with generative fill, right? You just like keep going until it looks good. Actually, that looks pretty good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. We'll just create a new layer and then we're gonna do the same thing, kind of like just right down here. Just like, any area that's giving you trouble, that's where you want to use generative fill. There we go. It can't just like fill in with a brand new face of a different expression yet. I'm sure in time it's going to be able to do all kinds of stuff. But for right now, we're just basically circling these problem areas. There we go. That looks pretty good. That like are honestly kind of difficult to fix on your own. Let's, there we go. Let's just do that one too. Let's just, and you can see I'm using the lasso tool and just making like very, very quick, easy selection. So like nothing hard at all here. This is cool. All right, there we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here. You can see I have a slight overlap here. So we'll just go ahead. I'm gonna just boop. There we go. Hit generative fill. I know this tool makes everyone, well, I can't say everyone, yeah, I feel like it makes me like lazier, but it also makes me like a super human with this program. So I'm like, why would we not use it, right? Cool, so it basically took care of all those problem areas. And now that head swap looks like absolutely seamless. Looks really, really good. Uh, there we go, let's just gen and fill this little area where it had like a little bit, you know, you could see that it repeated there. Perfect. So. It looks really good. And that's the hardest part of Gen Fill it, or about head swapping rather is like where you have those areas that don't exactly line up. Like how do you figure that out? And that's why we're using AI to figure that out. So uh, let's go back here. We're just gonna group all these layers together. So shift click them all, hit control or command G. All right, we'll just call this subject 01. By the way, you guys can download this PSD and you can follow along with these exact same images on flarn.com. Just follow the link right down below. You can download it for free. So let's go ahead and turn this off and back on and we can see like a pretty good head swap. Sometimes you'll do this and you'll notice like something happening here, right? Like I turn this off and on, I'm like, oh, I forgot that area. That's okay. You can actually just put a layer mask on the entire group. So you can see we have our subject 01 group and I'm just gonna paint black with my brush tool and just erase it wherever we have an area like that, okay? That can be helpful when you turn these off and on just to kind of look around and be like, did I miss anything? Like, does anything look weird? Um, but that's a pretty great head swap and pretty easy to do. So next, let's go ahead to our next subject. So let's make our next subject visible. Let's bring them into place. Again, what do we want to do? We want to start by lowering the opacity. So make sure you're on the word opacity here and just click and drag to the left there. Perfect. And then we're gonna put them in place. So let's hit Control or Command T. Let's go ahead and put them right about where we want them. Cool, I'm gonna line up the collar again. So let's grab this little control point and click and drag that to the collar. You don't have to use the collar, by the way. You can use any point of reference. I use the eye sometimes or the mouth, whatever you want. Okay, collar here looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna scale this up and down. Again, you wanna make sure the eyes are in about the same place with both of the photos, right? Go ahead and rotate his head just a little bit. There we go. You don't want it to be too small of a head. You want it to be about the same size, as close as you can to the original size of the head. 
you can get it a little bit wrong. It'll probably be fine, but you don't want to go so far. Okay, cool. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit bigger, because I, I do think his, uh, in one, his chin is kind of down a little bit. The other, his chin is up a little bit. So I'm going to use, we're just going to go a little bit larger. I think that'll actually work out a little bit better. There we go. Let's bring our opacity back to 100. So click on this word opacity and drag it to the right. Fantastic. And let's click right here on our layer mask icon. Perfect. So with that layer mask active, now we're going to just paint black right around the edges, just like we did before, you know, like just using the regular old brush tool on a layer mask here. I'm using a trackpad on my laptop. Like you don't even have to have anything fancy here. It's like really, you know, nice and nice and easy. And anywhere where it's kind of like giving you trouble, that's the place we use AI. Okay, let's use the open and close, close brackets to make our brush a little bit larger, a little bit smaller as we need. There we go go and then now we're kind of getting into this area where we have double ears so let's see i just want to see if i can fix that there we go <laughs> all right that looks good let's just go ahead and paint that in perfect and i want his arm from the original photo to kind of come around there all right well that's looking pretty good right uh i think the good thing to do is just turn it off and on at this point and be like, does that look natural? Is Does his head look like it's in the right position? I think we maybe should rotate his head a little bit. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command T, maybe rotate and kind of move his head in just a little bit. There we go. That feels like a little bit more natural. So just turn it off. Before you do all your complicated masking and artificial intelligence stuff, just turn it off and on and be like, does that actually look good? Because sometimes you'll get the angle wrong and then no matter how well of a job you do, you know, like covering it up, it's still gonna look a little bit weird. All right, but that looks pretty good, I gotta say. Okay, so what are the common, like the problem areas or like the difficult areas? This around the hair and then that double ear. I'm not gonna be able to get rid of that with just a layer mask, like I have to fill something in there. And then all this that's going on the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we can do with AI. So let's grab our lasso tool, L for the lasso tool. We're just gonna kind of come right down over here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure to come right up around the ear. We're basically just circling the area that we want to remove. Okay, cool, so we made this selection there. Let's click on this generative fill and just hit generate and see what it gives us. Hey, what are you gonna give us? This is, <laughs> you know, most of the time in Photoshop. Okay, it says the generated images were removed. Please review the guidelines. Now this happens sometimes if you basically just select areas that's like just skin. So let's just, let's try to just select a little bit more than that and see if it actually does it now. Okay. Obviously it's, you know, it, it wants to make sure it's doing a good job and doesn't, doesn't do anything wrong here. You got this AI, you got this generative fill. All right, it's saying still no. Let's go ahead and select a little bit more of his head and say, just fill, you know, come on, we're not asking for anything uh, inappropriate here. We just want a face swap. That's all we want. Okay, cool. So I just selected more and that seemed to work out a lot better. There we go. So we have a few different options here. So these gen fill options are pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit generate one more time and see what it gives us. So we'll go up to generate and it's just gonna use all the exact same information to generate a new area for us and hopefully it works. But if it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. You just hit gen fill one more time. Um, there we go. And I feel like all these options are actually like pretty good. Yeah, I'm totally happy with those options. They look great. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and zoom in. We're gonna hit L for the lasso tool one more time. And now I'm just gonna lasso up and around and you know, this, you can see here like a little bit of a double face type of deal. So we'll just go in. I can select like some of the good face too and it's gonna know what to do. All right, so let's go ahead and make that selection around the area we want to remove. Just select it and then hit generative fill. Oh, I just saw this little bit in the collar, but we can take care of that also. All right. All right, it said it removed because of community guidelines. Looks like it just doesn't know what to do, but that's okay. Let's just select more of the white shirt down there. Let's hit generative fill here and uh, try to hit generate one more time. This is, you never have the clone stamp tool telling you you can't do something, but <laughs> with AI, it does make sense. You can't be too mad about it. 
All right, cool. It did one. It it did one. Okay, cool. So let's hit generate and see if it'll just do another one. Sometimes it'll remove one, two, all three. You never really know. But uh, it it did one. So hey, cool, cool. Um, there we go. There we go. Like. Yeah, that's totally acceptable. Like, I don't mind that. Okay, cool. Thank you. I know you removed some, but hey, you still did the job, and I'm still proud of you. There we go. There. Let's go ahead and group those together, and then we're just going to turn this off and on. There we go. A little bit more work on the second one, just because we had a few different areas to kind of, like, blend together. Let's put a layer mask on here. I don't feel like we needed to uh, have this area do any gen fill. And then I'm just turning these off and on to see how we're looking on our before and our after but uh honestly i think it looks pretty good all right back to our other subject before and the after she looks great too and there we have our family portrait so let's go ahead and show you that's the before and the after face swap using generative ai to fill in those gaps and don't forget you can download this exact psd file as well as the sample images to follow along right on flurn.com just follow the link right down below Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that subscribe button. We'll send you free Photoshop tutorials. Give us a big thumbs up and let me know in a comment right down below what you'd like to see. Thanks again, and I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone.